slides. While I'm reviewing the slides and during the uh, question and answer session, we are recording this presentation and it will be made available to the public. At the end of the, the, the presentation of the slides, there will be an opportunity to ask some questions, both in the chat room and we'll, we'll be able to take a couple of questions from people who raise their hands. We ask that you please stay on topic for today's um, presentation and the topic is protection of, of tenants in the city of Los Angeles, uh, specifically dealing with evictions of residential tenants. If you have specific questions about your specific scenario, we will likely not be able to address that. Uh, those are better handled one-on-one -on -one with the staff at our department. So we'll be able to provide you information generally or general information about what the rules are but if there are specific scenarios, we, uh, we are going to ask that you please contact our department directly so you can speak with a staff member one-on-one. -on -one. At the very end of the presentation, we will have um, a survey for everybody uh, to give us your feedback on what you thought of today's webinar and any uh, suggestions you may have. So to give you an overview of the topic today, we will be discussing the city of LA renter protections, which do continue. They are in place even today. We will also be discussing the end of the state's deferred rent program or what is commonly referred to as AB 832. I'm sure many of you have heard that on September 30th of this year, the state law protections ended. But we, want to, we would like to explain exactly what that means um, because there's more to it than just the September 30th date. And we will also be briefly discussing the resource that the city provides uh, for eviction defense. First of all, I would like to point out that for our audience today, it is important for you to know that today's presentation is specifically about residential units located inside the city of Los Angeles. If you are a tenant or a landlord outside of the city of LA, then we recommend that you please contact your city or your county if you live in a different county or in the unincorporated area of LA County to understand the rights that you have in those specific cities in those specific areas. Many cities have their own rules, their own local laws, and today's information on today's webinar will only be about the city of LA and how they relate to the state law protections. One way to know whether or not the unit you own or rent is located inside the city of Los Angeles is by looking at your water and power bill. Do you pay it to LADWP? If you do, then the property is located in the city of Los Angeles. If you pay it to some other entity like Edison or another city's uh, power company, then you are not located in the city of Los Angeles. This is a very important slide for the public to review uh, and understand. This slide is specifically about the city of Los Angeles COVID-19 eviction protections for residential tenants. These, these protections continue to be in place um, as we speak today. The protections initiated uh, for those individuals raising their hands, uh, we will address the question and answer portion at the very end of the presentation. Thank you. These protections that you see on the slide are specifically for the city of Los Angeles residential tenants. These protections initiated on March 4th of 2020 and continue today. So long as the local emergency period continues in the city of Los Angeles, the eviction pr protections will be in place. We do not have an end date 
for the local emergency period. It is renewed every 30 days by the city council and it has been renewed for the past year and a half. If you wish to know when that emergency period ends, you could always visit our main webpage at housing.lacity.org. There will be announcements of any major changes um, that occur. The specific eviction protections that are still in place in the city of LA are that a landlord cannot evict a residential tenant for non-payment of rent if the tenant is unable to pay due to economic impact of COVID-19. So there must be some sort of COVID-19 financial distress by the tenant for the tenants to be protected under this rule. Furthermore, tenants are allowed to defer rent during the local emergency period and for 12 months after the local emergency period ends or May 1st of 2023, whichever date comes first. Please note that tenants are not required to provide documentation to the landlord to support their inability to pay rent due to COVID-19. But it is likely that if there ends up being a court case, the tenants will be asked to provide such documentation by the court. So it is very important that you save all of your documents. Tenants are also not required to sign any repayment agreements with the landlord. And if you do wish to do so, or you have already done so, we recommend that you seek legal advice. Another protection in place is for, for no-fault evictions. No-fault evictions are, for example, if a, a property owner wants to move into their unit or wants to move in their family, uh, or a resident manager, or if a property owner wants to withdraw the unit from the rental market under the Alice Act, these evictions are not permitted during the local emergency period. Number three on the slide also reminds people that a tenant cannot be evicted for the presence of unauthorized occupants, pets, or nuisance if it's related to COVID-19. And the last item on this slide uh, really goes to rent payment. Um, and it specifically states in the municipal code that a landlord cannot charge interest rate or late fees for unpaid rent due to COVID-19. On this slide, you will see an image of the COVID-19 rent protections fact sheet that is available our webpage at housing.lacity.org. This form is the form that a landlord is required to provide to a tenant um, whenever they issue a, a notice uh, to terminate tenancy once that is um, allowed to take place. The form is available in multiple languages on our website um, and you can download it. Uh, it's two pages long. The first page gives you a summary of the eviction protections and the second page is for um, use of the tenant if they wish to provide this to the owner in writing that they have been financially impacted by COVID-19. But once again, they're not required to do so under the city law. Now the slides that I have discussed are specifically about the city of Los Angeles, residential units, regardless of whether or not they're subject to the RSO, the rent stabilization ordinance, or what people commonly know as rent control. The eviction protections are for every residential unit in the city of Los Angeles. However, there is one additional protection that exists for units that are regulated by the rent stabilization ordinance. And in order for you to know if you live in a unit or if you own a unit subject to the RSO, uh, it's important to look at uh, what year the building was built. Um, so generally speaking, 
Uh, we look to October 1st of 1978. If it was built after that date, then generally speaking, it's not subject to the RSO with some exceptions. The RSO is a law that's been in place since the 70s. And what it does is it regulates rent increases so they cannot be above a certain percentage per year. It provides just cause evictions. So a landlord must have a legal reason to terminate the tenancy. There are a total of 14 legal reasons under the RSO. And if a tenant will be evicted for a no fault reason, it requires payment of relocation assistance. The additional protection that RSO units have is that a landlord may not increase the rent during the local emergency period and for one year after it ends. So as stated earlier in the presentation, the local emergency period continues. It has not ended yet. And there is no set end date for the emergency period. This restriction on rent increases only applies to RSO units. However, landlords may still collect some fees uh, from a tenant um, such as the RSO and SCEP surcharges at any time, so long as they, they issue a proper written notice. Um, and they may collect a just and reasonable rent increase at any time, so long as it is approved by the Los Angeles Housing Department. There are other types of surcharges related to seismic retrofit um, or certain capital improvements that are made to the property. Those cannot take place during the local emergency period, but they can take place 60 days after the local emergency period ends with proper notice and with approval from the housing department. On your slide, you will see that there is a telephone number that you could send a text message to to find out if your unit is subject to the RSO. What you do is you send a text message to the number on the screen. The number on the screen is 855 880-7368. You will text the word or the letters RSO, and then you will get uh, prompts on the phone as to, um, to enter your address, and you will get a reply back on whether or not the address you entered is subject to the RSO. So now I want to change the topic a little bit. I want to focus a little bit more. I want to focus on the state law protections. So first of all, it is true that some of the state protections did end on September 30th of 2021. Specifically, the, the deferment of rent ended on September 30th. The state law had allowed tenants to withhold rent um, starting March of 2020 through September 30th of 2021, if they were financially impacted by COVID-19 and, and gave the owner a declaration that they were impacted financially. Starting September 30th, under state law, that no longer is the case. However, the city of Los Angeles rent deferment continues and eviction protections also continue during the local emergency period. Again, I wanna remind everybody that these protections are only if the tenant was impacted by COVID-19. And I'm specifically referring to the eviction protections for non-payment or rent. Those are only for tenants who were impacted by COVID-19. All the other protections, uh, such as the, um, the rent increase freeze, that applies to every RSO unit, regardless of COVID-19 impact. Under the state law, if a tenant was financially impacted by COVID-19, they can never be evicted for non-payment of rent that became due starting March 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2021. If they did both of the things on this slide, the tenant had to have given the owner 
a declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress to the owner no later than 15 days after receiving a notice of non-payment of rent, uh, or some tenants did it proactively. And even if the owner never gave them a notice of non-payment of rent, many tenants every month would give this declaration to the landlord. Now there's a, a note here that special rules may apply and to seek legal advice. That, that is true. There may be some exceptions to this rule, but they're very unique situations that would require that you talk to an attorney. The second thing that a tenant was required to do to obtain state law protections was to pay 25% of the rent that became due from September 1st, 2020 through September 30th of 2021. And that 25% had to have been paid no later than September 30th of 2021. And of course, we, we always advise people uh, that if you're in this situation uh, where you're a landlord and you wanna recover your rent, for your tenant and you're being asked to pay rent, um, you should always seek legal advice. Um, and you may even start by contacting the Los Angeles Housing Department so we can kind of guide you as to where you can go. So very important to understand is what happens to the state eviction protections for tenants who were impacted by COVID-19 after September 30th of 2021. So prior to September 30th, a landlord had to give a 15 day notice to pay or quit. Effective October 1st, that has changed. It is now back to the normal rule, which was a three day notice to pay or quit. Anytime a landlord um, is thinking about issuing such a notice, we do advise you seek legal um, assistance so that you understand all of the notice requirements under state law. The other change is the tenants can no longer submit a declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress. And once again, there are special rules that could apply. There are potentially exceptions to this rule, but they're very unique and you should talk to an attorney about it. A third um, item that has also been impacted or changed uh, with the termination or with the end of the state rules is that there is now a modified process for an unlawful detainer action. Uh, before COVID, of course, unlawful detainer cases existed and there was a way that a, a landlord could terminate a tenancy legally in the court system. That still is a process um, they will become available for owners, but there are now special rules for landlords uh, in order to begin that process. And there are also special rules for tenants in order to defend themselves from that type of process. So of course, um, we do always suggest that if a tenant receives an unlawful detainer, you immediately get legal assistance since there is limited time to address or, or to answer your response. For owners, one very important thing to keep in mind is that you must apply for rent assistance before going to court. And rent assistance is currently available with the state of California. And the city of LA also is processing uh, applications that were already submitted by tenants and owners. The city of LA is no longer taking new applications, but the state is still taking new applications. Landlords who fail to apply for renter's assistance may face challenges in court proceedings. So similar question, but specifically for the city, what happens to city eviction protections for tenants financially impacted by COVID-19 after September 30th of 2021? So as stated earlier, the city eviction protections continue. They continue throughout the entire local emergency period, uh, which is ongoing. And in fact, for non-payment of rent, they'll continue well into October of 2022. And the reason why we say October of 2022 next year 
is because the city allows tenants up to 12 months to repay COVID-19 rental debt after the end of the local emergency period or May 1st of 2023, whichever date comes first. At the end of the repayment period, tenants will have to pay the full amount of rent or they may face eviction if they did not also follow the state law. And if you recall, the state law was um, giving the declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress and paying 25% of the rent for September 2020 through September 2021. So if a tenant did that for those months, they still cannot be evicted, even after the city uh, protections end. Now, very important point is that um, there, these are all new laws and every case is going to be very fact specific. Um, and that's why we really emphasize the need to uh, seek legal advice, especially if uh, you're in court. Um, before you go to court, you could contact our department as well and we will guide you as to where you need to go. Now, even though state and local protections um, for evictions do exist for tenants, it does not mean that a tenant never has to pay back the rent. In fact, eventually tenants do have to pay the rent to the landlord. In the city uh, of Los Angeles, um, the law does not require right now that the tenant pay 25% of the rent to be um, temporarily protected from the eviction. But tenants who did pay the 25% of rent due for the months from September 1st of 2020 to September 30th of 2021, by the 30th of September, get permanent eviction protections for non-payment of rent for these months under state law. Once again, the city protections are in place during the entire local emergency period, and in fact continue up to 12 months after the emergency period ends or May 1st of 2023, whichever date comes first. Now, I mentioned that we were going to briefly touch on uh, a resource that we have available in the city. This resource is specifically for eviction defense. So it is specifically for tenants in the city of Los Angeles. It is a new program. It started on July 1st of 2021. And it is a program where we work very closely with the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles to provide eviction prevention services. Uh, the Legal Aid Foundation uh, can provide um, multi assistance in multiple languages. And if you need assistance as a tenant, you can go to the website that's on the slide, stayhousedla.org. Now, even though the assistance is for tenants, the website statehousela.org does provide other resources for landlords. Specifically, they have uh, webinars, they have information uh, that you can read, bulletins and so forth that are important and are very useful for both landlords and tenants. Additionally, the city of LA has eight family source centers throughout the city that offer uh, various services, including services for housing, homelessness prevention, uh, resources for family. And both landlords and tenants could contact our family source centers uh, to seek assistance specifically uh, for your situation. Now, if a tenant actually requires legal um, defense for an eviction from our eviction defense program, you can access the information for free, of course, on the web page. But if you need legal assistance, legal representation from one of the attorneys, you will have to qualify by being a resident or, uh, in the city of Los Angeles. You must live in the city of Los Angeles. Um, you, your income must be at or below 80% AMI. And you must be impacted by COVID-19. Now, the assistance is available to people regardless of immigration status. So it's, it is open to any tenant who meets the income uh, requirement, who lives in the city of LA and was impacted by COVID-19. 
on the slide, you will see how you could um, contact the Legal Aid Foundation uh, for the Eviction Defense Program. Um, you can go to stayhousedla.org, or you could also contact them via the phone number at 888-694-0040. And just as a bit of background information on the Eviction Defense Program, it's a partnership between the City of LA, the LA County Department of Consumer Affairs, uh, and legal service providers in the community. When you go on their website, you will see this page which does point you to um, three different options where you can know your rights. So there you can read about the different rules. You can get legal help or you can find a workshop. Now, earlier in the presentation, I mentioned that it is very important that landlords um, ensure that they have applied to renters assistance. And this goes for tenants as well. Landlords and tenants need to be sure that they apply for renter's assistance. If you applied already with the city of Los Angeles in the past, you can check the status of your application by going on the website housing2.lacity.org. When you go on that website, you will be able to type in your zip code and your application number or your telephone number that you used on your application. And it will tell you what the current status of your application is. And there is a description of each type of status so you can have a better understanding of where you're at in the process. Some applications were referred to the state for processing. Um, if the status of your application indicates that it was referred to housingiskey.com, that means that the city of Los Angeles will not be processing your application. Instead, we have provided your information to the state and the state will put it on a priority list so that if the tenant applies, if the landlord applies, the state will know that it is on a priority list because they previously applied with the city of LA. If your application was referred to the state, then you can find their application on their website, which is housingiskey.com. People who also never applied with the city of LA can also submit an application with the state at the same webpage. The application with the state is open to both tenants and landlords, and as stated, people will be given priority if they previously applied with the city of LA and if the city of LA um, referred your application to the state. You do still need to submit an application with the state, even though we provided the information to the state on your application with the city, because they have a completely different um, set of, of forms and information that they will be requesting from you. If you have questions about the state, process or the state uh, renter's assistance, you can call them at their hotline, which is area code 833-430-2122. Now, if you specifically, if you specifically want to contact the Los Angeles Housing Department, we do have various ways in which um, you can contact us. And the first one is you can send us a, a note, a, a, essentially what is an email by going to the website at the very top of the slide, housing.la.org forward slash ask housing. Um, I know it's a little long. So what you could also do is you could just go to our main website, which is housing.lacity.org and just Google ask housing or ask LAHD and it will open up a form for you to input your, your question. Uh, you can submit your question at any time, 24 seven. You could also call our department at our hotline, which is area code 
And for tenants who have received a notice of termination of tenancy, you can file a complaint with our department online as well. And the web page to do that is also on the slide. And likewise, if you just go to our main website, um, you will be able to easily find how to file a complaint uh, on our main website. We also have a information page for um, landlords and tenants to review on what the current renter protections are, which you can also access at our main web page. Now at the bottom of the slide, you will see that we try to emphasize the state house delay resource, which is the eviction defense program with the city of LA. This resource is very important um, to use, especially when you have received an unlawful detainer summons. If you get an unlawful detainer summons, if a tenant gets this type of document, that means that the landlord has initiated an eviction court case. And it is very important that you immediately seek legal assistance. Some other resources that you may uh, be interested in reading about and, and even uh, contain some common FAQ, some common questions and answers are located on your screen right now. Um, some of these were um, are not on the LHD page, but they are on the City of LA webpage, coronavirus.lacity.org forward slash rent. Uh, the Los Angeles City Attorney also has an information page for tenants and landlords. And of course, we wanna emphasize again, to apply for state rent assistance, you can go to housingiskey.com. And if you wanna find out the status of your city application, you can go to housing2.lacity.org. Now, I'm going to uh, start our question and answer session. Um, I'm going to start it with some common questions that we get and hope that this uh, helps address um, the questions that the audience may have right now. Once I'm done with these commonly asked questions, um, we will open it up to um, some questions from the audience. Uh, if you could raise your hand, uh, we have um, someone who will be able to, to uh, help you unmute and that way we can try to address your, your specific concern. And also if, if we can open up the, the chat, um, we can um, also try to answer some of your questions via chat. Okay, everyone. So here are some of the common questions that we get. So what can a tenant do if they get an eviction notice, uh, specifically a notice to pay rent or quit? Well, first of all, we suggest that you contact our department, the Los Angeles Housing Department. Um, and you can do that via our, the hotline, uh, via filing a complaint, or via Ask LEHD. Secondly, we do recommend you seek legal advice, especially, and, and most importantly, if you are already in court, in eviction court. And you'll know that if you get a document that has the title or the name of it is unlawful detainer, unlawful detainer summons, unlawful detainer. That means you're in court. Um, for that, you do need to seek legal advice and we have the resource available of Stay Housed LA. Um, so we recommend you seek that type of assistance. And third, we do recommend that you apply for rent assistance if you have not already done so. The city application is closed now. So if you never applied with the city, you need to apply with the state at housingiskey.com. Now, the flip side of that would be a question by a landlord on how to recover unpaid rent. So it's very important that a landlord follow both the city and the state law. And there are various laws, various rules, new types of notices um, that the state requires and a new process, a new unlawful detainer process. So that is, um, that is a, a situation that does require that you seek legal assistance, uh, that you, you seek out an attorney who can help you 
uh, navigate uh, all of the, the new rules. And of course, very importantly, we suggest that you apply or we recommend that you apply for rent assistance as that is an important component of trying to address the need that both tenants and landlords have and, and could be an important factor in any sort of legal proceeding. Furthermore, under the CD rules, if a tenant is impacted by COVID-19, the owner will have to wait 12 months until the end of the local emergency period or May 1st of 2023, whichever date arrives first before pursuing an eviction against a tenant for past due rent uh, that became due during the local emergency period for which the tenant could not pay because they were impacted by COVID-19. Now, as a reminder, under state laws, if the tenant gave the declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress um, for the months of March 1st, 2020, through September 1st of 2021 and paid 25% of the rent from March, I'm sorry, and paid 25% of the rent from September 1st, 2020 through September 30th of 2021, they can never be evicted for non-payment of rent for those months. So where can landlords and tenants get more information about the renter assistance program? I know I've said it a few times, but it is very important that if you have an open application with the city, if it's pending, that you go to housing2.lecity.org to get the status of your application. We also do send no email notices to landlords and tenants as the application goes through our process so that you are aware of at what state your application is at. If you never apply with the city, or if the city referred you to the state, then you need to go to housingiskey.com for information and to submit your application. Um, so another related question is, has, has the renter's assistance program closed? Well, the state's program has not closed. The state program continues to accept new applications. The city program, no longer accepts new applications, but does continue to process applications that were already in place and determined to be eligible and not refer to the state. Can a landlord apply late fees for unpaid rent? No, a landlord cannot apply late fees for unpaid rent for the months that are covered during the local emergency period starting March 4th of 2020 until the end of the local emergency period. If the tenant was not able to pay rent because they were financially impacted by COVID-19. Can a landlord evict the tenant for any other reason, meaning outside of non-payment of rent? In, in the city of Los Angeles, every rental unit requires a just cause reason. So it requires one of the 14 legal reasons to evict during the local emergency period. Landlords cannot evict a tenant for, for a no-fault reason, just as a reminder, and cannot evict the tenant for presence of unauthorized occupants, pets, or nuisance related to COVID-19. And finally, if the tenant was not impacted by COVID-19, can they stop paying the rent? The eviction protections are specifically the non-payment of rent eviction protections are specifically for tenants who are not able to pay rent because they were financially impacted by COVID-19. So if they were not financially impacted by COVID-19, they have to follow the rules that have always been in place and pay their rent. Okay, so that is the last slide. I am gonna go ahead and um, just, show you the slide with contact information for LHD, for those of you who want to write anything down. Um, and now I do see there are um, a lot of questions in, in the chat. Uh, and I, I have seen some people raise their hands. Um, so if we could maybe take a couple of questions. Um, Elias, are you able to, or Gustavo, are you able to 
um, help uh, select someone who's raised their hand? Yes, I'm going to ask, ask uh, Rock the World to unmute. Hello. Yeah, hi. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to ask that I apply um, on September 1st. Uh, I was referred to the state, um, but I haven't uh, been able to see nothing. I didn't, I, I got a confirmation the same day when I applied, oh, you have applied, but that's it. And how can I see if my application is being processed and is active or was accepted or something like that? Okay, so if you applied um, after October, you said October 1st, right? No, no it was September 1st. September 1st, and, uh, and it was like how I was linked to the housingkey.com. Okay, so on, on the slide, I have um, the telephone number that you can call, and I'll, I can give it out. It's area code 833 833 mm -hmm. 430. Four three zero two one mm -hmm. two 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 two. So, yes, mm -hmm. that's the state a hotline uh, where they can give you an update on the status of your application. Okay, uh, we'll go to Araceli Abrego. Hello. Yes. Hi. Um, my question is, I have um, I have an application pending with this with the state with housing is key, um, and um, I've I've uh, ha there's like a, a task or like a case worker assigned to the application, um, and if there's any documentation or any further information that they need, they send you out an email. Um, requesting, you know, any documents or requesting you to go back into your application to, um, you know, upload information or whatnot. And um, I keep emailing the person that um, is in charge of my case, but I have not received a response to any of the emails. So I was wondering, I just heard that you gave out the number for the housing is key, which is the number that I usually call. Uh, but the people answering there can give you they can't give you any specific information about your application. They just tell you, you know, just email the person that is in charge of your application. But obviously, I know that there's you know hundreds of thousands of applications, and they can't answer every email. But when the email has to do with, you know. Um, trying to get information of the documents that they want you to submit and they don't respond to you, where do you go for help then? So in terms of the state program, um, we, the city, we, we, don't, we don't have any information about the status of your state application. Uh, that can only come from the state. Uh, I would suggest you, um, you go to the main website at housingiskey.com and carefully review any information they may have about their requirements uh, of their program. Uh, if they've sent you any emails uh, asking for specific documents, uh, just carefully review that. But uh, in terms of specifically talking to someone at the state, it would be through the hotline, or if they're referring you to your caseworker at the state, it would be through them. Yeah, that's what I was just uh, explaining that. That's what I have done, but they don't answer back the caseworker. So I was yeah. just wondering if there was, you know, um, we, I know there's, yeah. there's many we don't people, have any, you know, we don't have any, any updates or any information about the state application status. So, you know, you, oh. you'll have to contact the state for that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So any oh. questions about the eviction protections? I, um, the renter's assistance program, uh, you know, most of it is contacting the state if you apply with them. Uh, but if you have questions about eviction protections, go ahead, Gustavo. Okay, uh, JP. Uh, 
Um, JP? Thank you, I was unable to unmute. So as a landlord, I have concerns in regards to there seems to be very to little no information on assistance for landlords in regards to mortgage payments, utility bills, insurance, all these people want to get paid. They want their insurance to cover the, because you have the mortgage, the mortgage holder wants their payment and the tenants are not paying. And it's a long process to file and hopefully it'll get pushed through and eventually get some money but maybe not for another year, maybe you can't even start. the. So is there anything out there for landlords? I'm a mom and pop, I don't have hundreds of units, you know, this is a, you know, in a rent control situation. Uh, is there anything out there for landlords that they can find some sort of assistance, mortgage assistance, utility assistance, uh, insurance coverage, uh, anything like that that's out there for it? Because a lot of information here for tenants, but very little for landlords. And if the landlord defaults and it goes bank into bankruptcy or the bank owns it, then what will happen to the tenants then? Okay. So um, there are some resources um, for landlords in terms of um, at least information related to a mortgage and so forth, I, I would recommend that you contact the Los Angeles County Department of Consumer and Business Affairs. Uh, they have a pretty uh, broad program of resources for, for everybody, uh, including I've seen that they have information sessions on uh, prevention of foreclosure. So that's what I would recommend that you do is to contact the Los Angeles County Department of Consumer and Business Affairs. Okay, and is there a way to protect your credit in the meantime? That's a perfect question for, for them because they deal with consumer affair issues. Um, so they, they may be able to refer you or provide you the information on that topic. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, let's talk to Eldon McFerrin. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I basically, I was just going to, like, I concur with, uh, I think it was JP, that I can, I can, whenever I search for anything, because my, uh, so I have a tenant that has only served, they, she's only given me one uh, impact form, and she's never paid any, any of the 25%. So are they supposed to uh, submit an impact form for every month, or is it just a one-time thing? And are, do they have to pay the 25%? So in terms of having to pay the 25% under the city rules, they do not have to pay the 25% to be protected from eviction right now during the local emergency period and for up to 12 months, but no later than May 1st of 2023. So, so that, that's, yeah, so the under city, yes, 12, 12 months, months is the emergency period. The emergency sure. period is actually ongoing. It has not ended yet. So for example, if, if the emergency period just as an example, if the emergency period were to end on October 31st of 2021, the eviction protections for non-payment of rent would go for 12 months after that until October 31st of 2022. Right. Okay. So I have another question. Um, so uh, there is, are there any other reasons? Because my tenant uh, has like a fire hazard on their patio. Um she lives in unsafe conditions. I see illegal activity. Is there other reasons that you can evict? Or are they just completely protected no matter what they do? So there are 14 legal reasons for eviction in the city of Los Angeles. Um, right now, that's limited. That Right now, that's available or that's that applies to every residential uh, unit in the city of Los Angeles. Um, However, there are protections against uh, eviction if for COVID-related situations. So non-payment of rent, nuisance, unauthorized occupants, uh, unauthorized pets. If it's 
related to COVID, then they're protected from that eviction reason. Well, if it's outside of COVID, now, now one of the things I, I want to remind, I, I just want to point this out is if you're going to get into a specific scenario, there are many paths and many potential ways that we could address that issue. And I think that um, what I would suggest is that you contact us directly so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one communication with someone from our department. Um, is that the 833-430 number? For our department, uh, we actually have various ways you can contact us. One way is, I don't know your phone, but you can call us at area code 866-557-7368. Okay, do we have um, anyone else with the, uh, a raised hand? Hello. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I I I muted you by mistake. Uh, but yes, if you want to contact us, the information is on the screen. Okay. Okay. And then I just I have one last question. The uh, this recording, will we be able to access this recording? Yes, it'll be posted on our YouTube page. And I believe that there were directions available on the invite that you received. So please, please check that. It should be at the bottom of the page. Uh, we'll go ahead and ask uh, Cheryl, Cheryl to unmute herself or himself. Hello? Hello? Oh, wow. Okay, hi. Um, thank you. So I have a couple of questions. Number one is, are you guys, is the state going to provide rental assistance past the September 1st di um, date? The state will provide rental uh, assistance. Um, they're pro actually providing it ongoing. So what you would have to do as a no, tenant okay. landlord is- Let me rephrase it. Okay. Right, but this is say so. So, since since the city is going past the state, so the city is still in effect, and tenants are still not paying. At least my tenant hasn't paid for October. Am I? Um, I think you you cut out. I think we've lost her. Um, one thing I want to point out is um, I saw, I think in the chat, someone was asking about utilities. Um, and even earlier, I think the, the previous caller was asking about utilities. The state does also offer assistance with paying utilities. So in addition to assistance paying rent, uh, a tenant or landlord can also apply with the state for assistance paying your utility bill. I'm gonna ask HG to unmute. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um. Yeah, I had a question because I I paid. I've been affected financially. Um. You know, by COVID nineteen, right? So, and I did every month a uh, financial declaration, type notice, hardship, the actual official one from the city and also from the state. And I received the city ERAP um, that we applied for in April that covered me through March, any unpaid balance I had, but I was also paying 25% um, through uh, September this year, right? Um, so I had some balance remaining. I received an email from you guys saying contact the state. I contacted the state. I sent the, and did my application. I sent my landlord a notice that was on the state site saying, you know, I've applied and um, please apply also. 
I included that all again in a notice for her along with the, there was still a financial hardship on the state um, housing is key site. So I gave all that to her in both email form and I turned it in the way I usually pay my rent. And I reminded her that I had applied and applied for future rent October through November, I mean, December of this year. And so I didn't pay at 25% in October of this year, October 1st. Today, I got an email from her saying, hi, you know, I got all your notes, but I didn't see a rent check. So before I contact her back and say, yes, I, I didn't give you one because I applied um, for the, the full amount for October through December. Okay, I lost my track there. But what I'm trying to say is, what am I supposed to do or how shall I best approach that with her? Because also I have, I'm no longer getting my, you know, PUA claim, which was only 167 a week. And I did not get that for the whole time period. I was only able to get that. There's a problem with my claim. So I was only get, getting that from January through um, August this year. Okay. So I, I think to, to narrow it down, um, you essentially want to know effective October 1st of 2021, um, how, what type of eviction protections a tenant has for non-payment of rent? It looked like as long as, I mean, like I, maybe I didn't even have to contact her, but it looked, it sounds to me like she can't evict me for not paying just yet. And I did apply and I you know, sent to her to apply and, you know, she worked with me on all the other rent reliefs along the way. And in fact, gave me an updated ledger when, so I could apply this time around. And then, so I, I, I just wasn't sure how we're supposed to notify her uh, for the next three months. Okay, so the, the uh, city of LA protections still continue even after September 30th. Right. Um, and the city of LA rules do not require um, the 25% payment. It doesn't mean that if you, they were saying don't pay, if you're able to pay. No, I don't have pay. enough. I mean, I, I, I don't have enough. Like if, but, if I pay 25%, I won't right. have January. If you don't have, okay. If you don't have the ability to pay, the protections continue. And on our website, we actually have a form, a one-page form. It's pretty simple. And it's on the screen right now. Um, okay. COVID-19 renter protections fact sheet. The second okay. page of that image is the form that a tenant can fill out to okay. notify their landlord that I, you know, I tenant, I still continue to have financial impact from COVID-19 and I'm not able to pay my rent this month. Okay, so so just um, basically fill out that and give that, email it or give and or give her a hard copy of it and just put on the note, you know, this is my, my still my current situation mm -hmm. under the city of LA. Um, I'm going with that, but I've also applied, as you well know, to the state, and then I should be covered. Under the city protections. And be sure to keep a copy of every document you send. Yeah. Uh, be sure to send it in a way that you can prove that you send it. Um, okay. and, and just record, re uh, record a copy of everything and every payment you do make okay. or have made. Okay, but right, but right now what that email she sent me is not really considered harassment or, um, or uh, an eviction notice. It's just, I maybe need to spell it out to her once again. Yes, here's my other form. No, I have not applied. Uh, I'm, I'm not paying for October. And um, I have applied for the state for October aid. Thank you very much. Basic, you know, kindly, but basically yeah. saying that. Okay. Yeah, it's communication is important between a tenant and a landlord. Um, obviously, landlords they they need to know. You know, can you pay now? They want to tell you how much you owe without necessarily telling you you have to move out. Okay. Uh, but just to keep you informed and 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 you know, in response, a tenant should communicate with the landlord yeah, if yeah. they're still financially impacted by COVID-19. Okay, because I had turned in, I, I didn't know to turn in this one, but I had given her, you know, for okay. October 1st, the, the state, uh, whatever. The, yeah, one. the state one was required by the state. Okay, got the it. The state one is not required, 
Got but it, it, but it's, helpful. it's obviously it's a very good idea uh, to keep the owner informed. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, I did see a question in the chat um, about the renter assistance program and why was it referred to the city? So essentially, um, I mean, the city has limited funds. Uh, we cannot uh, pay everybody what um, they need. Um, so we have essentially reached a point where uh, we couldn't pay every application. So we worked with the state in partnership to have the state provide uh, additional financial assistance to landlords and to tenants. Um, and that's why um, the city of LA applications had to be referred or some of them had to be referred to the state. Um, okay, and uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Gabriela Vidales to unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thank you for and um, picking up. I just had a quick question. I am behind one month of June, 2021, I gave the owner the declaration. I've applied and it's still pending. And I asked him to the owner if he applied and he's also, he also applied. So we're kind of just waiting. And I guess my question is, can he evict me still or no? I'm, I'm just scared that he can evict me. For non-payment of rent, if a tenant was financially impacted by COVID-19, mm -hmm. a landlord in the city of LA um, is, is not allowed to evict a tenant. Now, if a tenant does get a notice of non-payment of rent to, or to pay or move out, or even worse, an unlawful detainer, which is a, an eviction court in case for non-payment of rent, mm -hmm. you should immediately uh, contact the Los Angeles Housing Department for some guidance. And certainly if it's a case in court, you should get legal assistance to be sure that you answer and file all the paperwork timely with the court. Okay. Um, do you but know by any chance how long? The city. Yeah, I am in the city and it is a rent control. So I think that's what I was worried about because I know the September 30th passed. I wasn't able to pay the 25%, but I've been paying him. You know, I paid August, September, October. I'm just behind one month of June 2021. And this owner is a new owner and he would love to get all the old tenants out to fix and, uh, you know, raise the rent. Um, in terms of rent increases, I, I actually saw a, a question in the chat as well about rent increases. Um, in my presentation, I did talk about uh, rent increase freeze that's in place, uh, but this rent increase freeze is um, for units that are subject to the RSO, units that are subject to the rent stabilization ordinance there cannot be a rent increase during the local emergency period and for one year after the local emergency period ends. Once that time period ends, once it's been the one year after the end of the local emergency period, then rent increases can initiate again with proper notification and only up to the percentage that's allowed under the city rules. Um, okay. If the unit is not subject to the RSO, and there may be some of you out there who have units in the city of LA, but not RSO, then um, I would suggest you go on our website and read about the uh, rules on the state law, AB 1482, which does place restrictions on rent increases on non-RSO units, which are different from the restrictions on RSO units. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you picking up and letting me know. You're welcome. Um, I think we have time for probably one more question. Um, so if, if we if we could take one more person. Okay, uh, we have uh, Grace Ann. Grace Ann. Yes, thank you so much. So uh, as a landlord, I have a tenant who had been affected but was maintaining responsibility paying from her life savings. Um, the work has still not picked up for her. She has asked me, um, to do the paperwork with, which I did with the state as she did with the state, not with the city. So two questions to this. Um, does the paperwork, if it's done with the state also need to be done with the city? And 
um, because she was not um, in arrears prior to October, did not pay me 25% nor send a declaration because it wasn't in a, she wasn't in that position. Does, do I need to ask for that? Do I need to get 25% and a declaration moving forward since it started October 1st? And do I need to get um, to file with the city as well as the state? Okay, so the first question is, that the first part of the, the answer to your question is, you do not have to file with both the city and the state. It is possible that some people only file with the state and, and that's fine, that's that's okay. And it is also possible that some people only filed with the city and are going to have the full uh, rent that they owe uh, covered by the city. So you're okay if you only file with the state. Now, the second part of your question had to do with what happens to tenants who, who were fine most of the, the time period up until October. Uh, October 1st of 2021. Well, under the state law, uh, there is no longer a declaration of COVID-19 financial distress notice that's required by the tenant. Um, there is no longer a 25% requirement to pay the rent. Um, I mean, the tenant can, but that's not, it, it doesn't do anything in terms of state law protections. However, under the city laws, uh, if the tenant continues to be financially impacted by COVID-19 and they cannot be evicted for non-payment of rent moving forward um, and for and they have 12 months to repay that rent that they owe after the local emergency period ends. Um, in terms of notification by the tenant to the landlord, the city law does not require that the tenant provide written notification to the landlord, but as stated earlier, um, we do have a form that a tenant can use to notify the owner of their financial distress um, so that you can have a record of that. Okay, well, um, I do wanna thank everybody for taking time out of your schedule. I know this is a very important topic for both landlords and tenants. Uh, and I realize we probably were not able to answer all of your questions uh, that you have. Uh, but we do have various resources for tenants and for landlords to reach out to us. See on your slide right now, uh, you can contact the Los Angeles Housing Department for general information. Tenants can file a complaint with us. Um, and we also have the eviction defense program that can provide information to both landlords and tenants and thus provide legal assistance to, to tenants. Um, there are other resources throughout the city and if you go to coronavirus.lacity.org forward slash rent, uh, you will see other information there. Um, and we strongly encourage you to apply to the renter's assistance program with the state if you have not already done so, or if you do not have a pending application with the city. Um, so for now, um, I think that's, that's it for our presentation. And uh, once again, I want to thank everybody. And we do have a survey that we want uh, to release um, so that you can give us your feedback on what you thought about the webinar, any suggestions you may have. Um, we would really appreciate your feedback. Um, and I am going to leave the slide up that has the resources. So if you don't have them, you can um, write them down. Um, have we been able to release the survey? Yes, that was launched already. Great. So once again, thank you, everybody. And I wish everyone the best.